Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a look at combining all of the things you've learned and add a couple of new tricks so that we can build one of our core models. I've discovered in game development that you really only need to build a couple of kind of models, and when you learn how to build these, you can modify them to make many, many other kinds of things. So the first thing we're going to build is a basic vehicle model. <clears throat> this will be a car, but once you know how to do that, you can modify it to be just about anything else you want. So let's get started, and we're going to go ahead and build a cute little cartoon car that we can use in games later. So the first thing, I'm sitting at an ordinary blank screen. Let me go ahead and bring up the keyboard tools for you so you can see what keys I'm pressing. Uh, where'd that go? Start display. All right, so now I'm in a new screen. And we're going to uh, begin by changing our perspective. <clears throat> now, since I'm going to be using this eventually in a game, I want to think about where the nose is. So I'm going to have the nose of my vehicle pointing in the positive Y direction. That means I want to be careful that I'm in a side view as I begin so that my model is facing in a predictable direction. You forget this step, you can have some problems later. So we're going to begin by having the nose go over here to the right. All right, super. Well, this does not look much like a car, so let's get to edit mode. And I'm going to subdivide so that I have more sections to use. Now, A, to unselect everything, I'm going to turn off this mode so that when I select, it will select all the way through. All right, I'm going to block select, and I'm grabbing all that. Now, the perspective will mess me up a little bit, so I'm going to turn that off with the 5 key. Now, extrude once and extrude again. Let's check and make sure everything's looking good. Beautiful. Three to go back to a side view. A to unselect. B to box select. And extrude. And now I have a car. It's not a beautiful car. It looks kind of like a Volvo to me, but it's a good start. All right, we'll select the whole thing. And now we want to deal with colors. So here's what we'll do. We'll come back over to the color selector. And we're going to name things. You know, before we do anything else, I'm going to name the car itself. So I'm going to come over here to this little cube. It's called the object menu. And I'm going to change the name of this thing to car because as we've said, good programmers always name things. Now we'll come over to the material section and I will name this material car color. Okay, good. Now white is boring. We want a little red Corvette. Okay, there you go, that's pretty good. Now here's a really cool trick. If I do Control and Alt and click on one of these horizontal beams, it will do a ring select of all of these faces. That's just a handy little tool. Of course, you didn't know that, you could just select them all, there's not too many. Um, but that selects this whole segment. Now what I'm going to do is create a new space for a color, or for a material. I'll create the new material. And now we'll make some sort of, I don't know, a light blue. Okay, and we'll call that window. And now we'll assign that to these selected elements. And now I have a red car with blue windows. Well, that's kind of neat. All right, cool. Back in object mode so I can see the whole thing. This still doesn't look very car-like. Well, we may want to make it look a little more smooth and organic. One of the problems with the subdivision modeling that we're doing is that everything's very blocky. So if you want to make things that look more organic, like a body or a, an animal or a vehicle, well, you need to do some tricks. But of course, we are chock full of tricks. You look over here at the wrench, and the wrench is the modifier screen. Now, you should be very nervous because it looks so clean. Yes, this is one of the more complex parts of Blender. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything there. That's ironic. All right, when we come over here, um, we can choose to add all kinds of modifiers. Do not worry. You don't have to know what all of these do. There's a handful of them that I use, and I'll teach them as you need them. But here's one that's incredibly powerful, and it's called multi-resolution. Now, what multi-resolution does is it allows us to subdivide, basically to do a virtual subdivision. So you remember we subdivided before in edit mode and it just created new vertices. Now when I subdivide here it will not only create new vertices but it'll automatically smooth and curve the vertices so that it will look more organic. Let me just show you. 
We need to be in object mode. If you're in edit mode, then the subdivide button won't be visible. So we need to be in object mode, and I click subdivide. And you can see that it's appeared to make a new set of vertices. Now it has, but they're virtual. They're not really a part of the mesh. They're calculated in real time. I'm going to subdivide a second time to make it smoother yet. We still have those ridges, sort of that dirigible thing going on, and we can fix that by changing the shading to smooth. Again, that's a fancy technique called normal interpolation, which we don't need to get into here, but you can see that already we have a really nice, smooth-looking car shape. In fact, I could stop it right there and call it a hover car, because darn it, I'm a game programmer. If I'm too lazy for wheels, I just make it a hover car. But we need some wheels, don't you think? All right, so we'll add some wheels. I'm going to come on over. Um, I'm going to come back here a little bit. Make sure I'm near the center. And I'm going to build a wheel. Now, of course, a wheel, the closest primitive we have is a cylinder. That does not look very wheel-like. It's all right. I'm going to look at it from the back, and I'm going to rotate it. Now, you can use the control key while you're rotating to lock the rotation in place. That's not bad. I'm going to move it kind of where the wheel ought to be. And now, we're going to move it over here a little bit, kind of monster truck, sort of liking it. Excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze, but that's still too big. Let's scale it down a skosh. Take a look at that again. Um, all right, now we want to scale this along X. Okay, look at it on the side again. Still too big. Now this will be the outside tire. We'll do a little more with it. Let's move it up a bit so it feels like the axle is inside the car. Look at the side. That's not bad. You like that? I like that. That's not bad. Okay, so let's make this look like a tire. And what we'll do is we'll go to the colors and add a new material. Change its color to black. Now, if we want to, we could reduce the reflection on this a little bit. I kind of like the idea of shiny tires, so I'm going to leave it alone. But if you want to reduce the reflection, you could just take the intensity way down. It doesn't matter for now. I'm going to leave it like that, and we'll see if we like it or not. All right, that's good. Um, I'm going to do a couple of other things to make it look more, I don't know, tirey. Uh, let's look at the back view. Zoom in real close. Um, I'm going to put it back into edit mode and use the loop, cut, and slide to add a couple of subdivisions here manually. So there's one there, and we'll do it here again. Good. All right, that's very nice. Because now, um, when I look at the whole thing, if I decide to do a, um, a, a, a multi-res on this, let's go ahead and do it come over and add a multi-res on this guy. I think I only need one level of multi-res. Look at that. I got a nice looking little pattern there. That's feeling very car-ish. Okay, I like that. Now I could manipulate a little bit, but the tire looks pretty good considering that I haven't done much. Now I'm going to show you how to make a hubcap. And there's a couple of ways. Later on when we learn UV modeling, there's some more we could do with it. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is simply add another cylinder. Okay, the easiest way to do this is to carefully move to this place that I originally was in when I first created this guy. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to move the tire so it's right back on top of that 3D control or that uh, 3D cursor there. And now I'm going to create another, oh, sorry, this is important. It matters when you add another element. If I am in object mode, as I add right now, when I add a new object, it's a totally new object. If I add an object mode when I'm in the edit mode, so now I'm going to add a new cylinder. This secondary cylinder is actually a part of the original. They're the same object. And that's, you just have to understand how that works because sometimes that works well for you and sometimes it does not. And so you want to know when you're doing it because you'll get pretty confused if you don't. So I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to scale it. Now the whole idea of this one 
is to represent the hubcap. And so um, to make it clear what the hubcap is, I'm going to also change its color. So I come over to materials and uh, we'll call that material tire. Now make a space for a new material, create the new material. Um, we'll call this one hubcap. Hubcap. Now there's a hubcap color. I'm going to leave that white and assign it to the selected part. Now don't forget we had a multi-res already in place. So let's go back to object mode. And that's not too bad. My hubcap is a little big, but that's okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, the part, the inner cylinder is already selected, so I'm going to scale it just a bit along X. Now, not too much, because remember, it's going to be more organic, more sort of smooth when I go to object mode. That is not bad at all. Look at that. That's a pretty good look and tire and hubcap. Okay, so um, let's test to make sure this is indeed the same object. It is. So now we're going to move it so that it's in the right place on the car. Up a little bit. That looks pretty good, do you think? I like it. The back, the side, that's not bad. Okay, now we need a front wheel. And here's the great thing, since the back wheel already looks pretty darn good, one more thing I'll do is change it so its name is wheel. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it. Um, copy and paste is useful. It's also useful in 3D modeling. And it's quite easy. In Blender, Shift-D makes a duplicate. And so I'll duplicate the wheel and bring it up to the front, drop it kind of where I want it to be. That looks pretty good. Now this car will not be fun to drive yet. What else do we need to do? Well, let's look at the, there's the top. We really want to look at the bottom. That's control seven. Now we're going to select both wheels. So shift right click to select the second wheel. Duplicate again. This will now duplicate both wheels and I'll drag it over to the other side of the car. Okay, let's look at this. We got a nice looking little car there considering we didn't know what we were doing. That's a beautiful little car. Okay, although it has a problem. Take a look. I select the car and I move it and oops, the wheels stay right there. That is not what we wanted. What we want is the wheels to be attached to the car. There's a couple of ways to do this, but the most appropriate is to use a notion called parenting. So we want to tell the wheels that the car body is their parent. And here's the best way to do that. Control 7 to look at the bottom. Now we're going to select them. The order in which we select things matters. Um, I always remember women and children first. And what I mean by this is I select the children first. And the last thing that I select is what I want to be the parent. So I want all of the wheels to be children objects and the car to be the parent object. So the car is selected last. Then I can use the control P command to set the parent to object, which means that now it's all one object. So as I move the car, the wheels will follow. And of course, soon enough, I'm going to be doing this with, you know, keyboard commands or a mouse or a joystick or something. And so I want the car to be able to follow my various inputs and the wheels should follow along with where the car is going. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, there's our basic car. I'll save this model and make it available for you to take a look at in your own version of Blender. But of course, you need to make this yourself. Practice it several times until you're very comfortable. Of course, all kinds of variations. You want a boat? Don't put wheels in. Modify the hull. Um, you want it to be, you know, a tank. Okay, just change it a little bit. Make treads. Um, add a turret. Maybe that's a separate object we can rotate later. Um, basically, any vehicle. Airplanes? Really not that different. You need wings. Um, pretty much any vehicle can be made with this mechanism. And what you'll often do is have your primary body or fuselage basically coming out of a block and then use other shapes modified to create the wings, the tails, the wheels, um, the propellers, or whatever else that you need. Pretty cool, huh?
All right, well, try this. Build your own car and come back, and I've got another model to show you next time. See you then.